The ocean is an extremely vast and unforgiving habitat that covers about 70% of our planet's surface. It's the place where we believe life began and has persisted longer than anywhere else. Home to nearly 80% of all animals, competition amongst marine species is fierce, but there can only be one apex predator, the orca. Also known as the killer whale, although their name was originally whale killer, given to them by sailors who had witnessed them hunt and kill whales. They are the only known predator of great white sharks and have even been known to hunt in groups to take down blue whales, the largest animal that has ever lived. They are not the biggest or the strongest, so they use teamwork to take down large prey. Previous observations detail about 14 orcas being involved in attacking a blue whale. After the whale sunk to the seabed, nearly 50 orcas were seen surfacing chunks of flesh to share with each other. They will usually feed their young, sick, or injured, and take care of them much like humans do. Unlike many other top predators, they are highly social and live in groups called pods. Pods consist of tightly knit bonds among close and sometimes extended family members. Organized around mothers and grandmothers, the head of the pod is a female who assumes the role of the matriarch, teaching her young ones about all the family secrets for 15 years or more. When males reach sexual maturity, they will have opportunities to mate when their pod encounters another, or they will leave their pod to mate but usually end up returning to their mother's side. Pregnancies result in one calf and last for about 15 to 18 months. Newborns depend on their mother's milk for one to two years. Intense parenting means females raise only one healthy calf every five to ten years. They are one of only three mammals that experience menopause. Female killer whales stop reproducing around 40 years old but can live healthy lives into their 90s. Elderly females continue to contribute to their legacy by ensuring the survival and reproduction of their kids and grandchildren. Researchers have discovered that menopausal females are most often the ones leading hunting parties with a large male not far behind, which begs the question of whether or not their male offspring are more dependent than their daughters. Studies have shown that within a year of the mother's death, young males have a higher chance of death than females. It is assumed that family matters to them as much as it does to us, as the death of elderly females have an even greater impact on older family members. During times of hardship, elderly females have been known to lead foraging trips. They have the experience and ecological knowledge to find food when it is the most scarce. They prove to continue to play a key role within their societies later into their lives and are essential for the survival of their families. When it comes to raising their young, there is much they need to teach for their offspring to become healthy adult killer whales. Communication is one of the first and most important things for them to learn. Each pod has its own dialect that they use to communicate with one another. The sounds the calves first make are simply screams that do not resemble the calls of adults. Up until puberty, they will learn what different calls mean and which calls to make under particular circumstances. Pods that are associated with each other will share certain calls. The amount of their repertoire that is shared indicates how closely associated or related the pods or individuals are. Despite being grouped into one species, there are actually three distinct types of killer whales. They are known as resident, transient, and offshore. Their lifestyle choices end up leading to completely different cultures as they differ in habitat, appearance, diet, hunting techniques, genetics, and behavior. Resident killer whales are usually found inland or in coastal waters in the eastern North Pacific. They're the most vocal as they communicate with each other while hunting and often use echolocation to seek out their preferred meal, usually feasting on fish, although Chinook salmon is their favorite. From about 500 feet away, echolocation helps them to identify what type of salmon is ahead based on the difference in swim bladders. Despite the abundance of other salmon species, they will purposefully hunt their favorite, even when it is difficult to find. Transient orcas take on a much different hunting approach as they prefer marine mammals. Usually the subject of epic hunting videos, they've been known to hunt whales, seals, porpoises, sea lions, and dolphins. They are not as vocal because the hearing of mammals is more sensitive to echolocation than fish. Instead, they often swim quietly for long distances as they listen for any sounds or changes in the surf. Traveling and hunting in smaller groups of usually three to seven consisting of a mother and her offspring, although pods will work together to take down large prey. Their strategy for hunting whales is simply to try drowning them. They try to prevent them from breaching the surface, jumping out of the water and landing on top of the whale to push it down and restrict it from breathing. 
When faced with a challenge, they seem to problem solve and pass down the information to the next generation. An example of this is how they knock seals off of ice floats, which is a technique that requires excellent precision and communication. They will form a line and swim in synchronicity, creating waves that either knock the seal off or tip the ice. Orcas off the coast of Argentina have adopted possibly the most technical style of hunting. When the tide is calm, they plan and wait for the perfect time to ambush their prey. Targeting seals in shallow water, they surf an approaching wave and lunge forward, intentionally beaching themselves while securing their meal, but a thin line separates dinner and death. Many orcas are terrified of the feeling of being beached or out of the water, which has stopped many of them from perfecting this hunting technique. It is a reasonable fear as beaching themselves always poses a risk of getting stuck, which can often lead to death. After dinner is caught, they contort their bodies and orient themselves parallel to the waves and slowly make their way back into the water with the help of the current. Calves will observe and practice for years, but in the end, only some of them are able to become experts. The least is known about the offshore killer whales, as they are usually found in open ocean and tend to be wary of boats. Their diet primarily consists of fish and sharks, weighing up to 16,000 pounds and reaching a top speed of 35 miles or 55 kilometers per hour. They stun great white sharks by bull rushing them. They proceed to flip them on their back to ensure they drown while removing their liver with surgeon-like precision. The skin of sharks is generally tough, causing these killer whales to suffer more wear and tear on their teeth and are more at risk of dental disease. The ability to teach, learn, and organize complex attacks is nearly comparable to the skills of humans. Killer whales actually have the second largest brain on the planet, weighing up to 15 pounds. Although researchers believe brain weight to body weight ratio is the most accurate way of assessing intelligence. Orca's brains are two and a half times the average ratio, making it presumably one of the smartest animals on the planet. They have a well-developed insular cortex, which is associated with emotional experience, compassion, empathy, self-awareness, cognitive function, and more. Through filmed encounters and experiences, the emotional and cognitive characteristics are easily noticeable without having to study their brain. Observing their daily lives and interactions has shown that they have cultures just as rich as humans. With information being passed down from generation to generation, they are dependent on family and long-term relationships. They may have teeth more than three inches in length and a bite force more than four times as powerful as a great white shark. But menacing characteristics are common amongst most predators. What sets them apart as the ocean's apex predator is their intelligence, sociability, and ability to adapt as they have throughout every ocean around the world. I'd like to give a big thank you to all of our new subscribers. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching.